Yeah. Well, hello. This is Ed Peterson uh, with my uh, vlog and podcast called uh, Therapy, Emotion, and Sex, Conversations That Matter. And I'm here with my friend and my colleague, Ben Croft. Ben, hi, how are you, my friend? Doing well. Is, it, is there a T on the end of that or is it just Croft? Just F, 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 no T. So just Croft. Uh-huh. All right. So no T, no T, all right. Mm -hmm. so this is our second time ben thanks for coming back happy to that makes me feel uh feel good that you're one it always feels good when someone says they'll come back yeah and uh, you're always good at helping me gain insight about myself so <laughs> well that's good i think um, i value that that is kind of what we do as therapists right right yeah Awesome. So Ben and I just were talking and, uh, you know, I think this topic that I'm going to bring up and, um, well, wait, before we do that again, Ben, just tell us a quick little bit about yourself, where you practice, who mm -hmm. you are, how, how long you've been doing this. Let's just make sure the uh, audience knows who you are. I am a, uh, an EFT focused therapist at the EFT clinic in Mill Creek and Lehigh, mostly in Lehigh. And, uh, I have, I, I see probably 50% of my clients are couples. And then, uh, of course, um, individual clients and a lot of family combinations, parents and kids or adult siblings or adults and their parents, a lot of family type of dynamics. Okay. Yep. Great. And um, do you do anything social media wise? Uh, other than I um, sometimes scroll on them and like things on them. So you snoop on other people's things. I, I snoop. I'm not a, a content producer. At least not yet, right? Awesome. Okay. And Ben, I can just say this. And, and this is for our um, audience that may not be in Utah. Um, we live and practice in Salt Lake City, Utah. Beautiful place. Um and I've known Ben going on, so I think it's three years now, at least. Yeah. Uh, because you've been at the EFT clinic for how long? Actually, uh, since probably 2018, I did my internship with the EFT clinic. Uh, four years. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and so here's what ben and i want to talk about today and i hope for our listeners this will be interesting and helpful not just for you therapists but also for people who are not therapists who are people who are just trying to figure out their lives um you know ben and i practice a kind of therapy called emotionally focused therapy or eft which is based in a theory called attachment theory from a scientist named john bowlby uh from britain uh the attachment theory has been around for about 70 years EFT about 30. Dr. Sue Johnson is our hero and leader, the woman who helped create, really did create EFT. And um, so the thing that Ben and I were talking about was what it's like to work with uh, clients, especially couples, where one of the partners is very angry or strident or escalated um, and especially is more the pursuer in the relationship and Ben take a second and take your best stab at describing to uh, our audience here uh, briefly what is uh, in your mind what's a pursuer and a, what's a withdrawer and how does that fit in with the idea of anxious attachment versus avoidant attachment uh, yeah your pursuer typically is um, the partner in the relationship who feels a lack of connection and wants more, um, is anxious because that that experienced lack of connection leads them feeling uh, worried that they're not, um, the relationship's not stable, it's not going to continue, it's threatened somehow. Right. And so the, the, the um, that anxiety can drive that pursuer to um, what we call a protest for connection. Get get in and and uh, 
want to kind of shake up that um, withdrawer partner. Um, the withdrawer partner tends to show up a little more um, in, in kind of a self-protective way, right? I'm, um, they're in trouble, they're, they're doing it wrong, they're being attacked, they're being, um, uh, it, it, unfortunately, the message of the pursuer is being perceived by the withdrawer as a threat. Right. Which further um, creates distance and, and encourages the withdrawer to protect and, and stay safe and instead right. of coming out and connecting. So it's, that's the dynamic that often starts happening. Yeah. And we see that a lot, right? When, because I, and I love the way you describe that, because um, that's one of the ways that I can best understand the pursue and withdraw that tends to happen in relationships is that they're just different strategies to deal with emotional upset or to deal with emotional conflict. Um, and um, yeah, some people, when they're, when things get hot, right. When there's intensity or emotion or fighting or disconnection, or, you know, people aren't feeling close or aren't feeling safe. Some people do, they come forward and they ask for more, right. They come forward and they, uh, they complain and they they protest and then some people go back and some people need a, you know they turtle mm -hmm. they need to get space and neither is right or wrong mm -hmm. and I think you and i would agree that most of that was actually created in childhood yeah um, right um great so so here's the the uh the way that I want to start talking about this, then I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you know, we're always very careful on my show to um, protect the confidentiality of our clients. And so we will never be, of course, we would never talk about a client username, but we're also not going to give specifics of a client situation so that anyone could ever know who that is. But we are going to talk about themes and types of clients, right? And then not only the types of clients and how they show up and what it's like to do therapy with them, but even what it might feel like to be them. And then what it feels mm -hmm. like for us to be the therapist in the room. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the first, the thing that we talked about doing that is let's talk about angry, loud, pursuing, um, anxiously attached um, people. Um, and I love that Sue Johnson uses those words like, escalated strident i love that word strident meaning that they're just they're so they're intense right yeah and um and pursuers often come off sounding very critical when what we know from attachment theory is that they're actually um trying to get connection they're trying to feel safe yeah um and so there was i'm going to say what i'm going to share is a combination of about three couples that I remember working with about a year or two ago. And uh, I remember one situation where the um, it became clear after, I mean, the first session, right? That what was happening, this is not just one client, lots of clients have done this, right? Where the presentation of the client, when he or she, um, he, she, they, whatever their pro pronoun is, start talking about what's happening. Like if my question is, hey, Ben, how's it going in the relationship? Or how's it going with your partner, right? Mm -hmm. What you hear a lot is people intense and blaming. And I, I remember a phrase I heard once, which was, if uh, it was a husband said, this is many years ago, if she could just understand what a great guy I am and how hard I'm trying and how I've been doing so much for this relationship and I'm a good father, if she would just appreciate me and you know not do this thing she does where she undercuts me or she doesn't have my back, um, if she would just do that, then you know then we would be good. But clearly she you know and then it, and then it ramped ramped up right and yeah. it ramped up to um you know there's clearly something wrong with her because she can't connect with me i've been trying to connect for so long right and the criticism just grew and grew 
Mm -hmm. So what's it like for you when you are faced with a pursuer who's getting loud and angry and maybe even on the border of sounding abusive and things that they say? Right. What's right. that like for you as a therapist? How do you think about it? What do you do? Yeah, I have to hold two positions at that moment. One is um, I have to I have to know that the person who's being accused is they're 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 hurting. This is this is hard for them to hear their partner come in and say if they would just change in this way, that way, that way, that way. No. These are these are like bullets that are being sent to this person, right? And I know, so I I I one is um, I have to support that person. I, I have to make sure that that person um, is safe. I have to let them know that I see them, that I'm right. That, that, that's I. You just heard this is this is hard to hear this thing. That there's probably you that probably wants to defend that deflect that argue that that's your here's this feedback you're getting that's not and so i have to hold that space for them while not um trying to uh necessarily sh shut down too quickly this per this anxious pursuer because this this per this pursuer's trying to get to their emotion but but they lead their emotion with these accusations. Right. And if I if I if I jump in and say, no, that's that stop saying mean things, then then they're they're just going to further feel disconnected and anxious because they can't, right? Well, and right. And they'll feel like they're getting the same feedback feedback from you that they get from a lot of people, which is uh -huh. they're just too much they're too demanding they're too loud they're too angry and yeah and they'll feel like you're you're yeah. taking sides as the therapist right right so it, so not to take the side and and reprove this person i have to empathize with them right i have to know this hurts right you're so you're so afraid right now you're so um distant right now you want your partner to hear of your pain and this is important to you to communicate so much that it comes out it comes out so strong and maybe even i'm i'm sitting here listening to you and it can feel scary to hear this level of intensity coming from you and i'm hearing your senior partner sit here trying to hear this tell me and so I kind of direct them and, and, and through empathy, get, get them to move away from the accusation and into their underlying fears and, right. and emotions and needs that, that are really driving there. We see, and I, I really like your idea of how, of how you're really having to hold two positions at the same time, because yeah. that's exactly right. And I think we do the same thing when we're doing individual therapy. It's just that when we're doing individual therapy, we're almost having to, you know, the, the, like the different parts inside of a person, we're yeah. having to make sure we support both sides. Right. Yeah. But what you're saying is that you're, if you, you know, that the pursuers, the person who's being criticized, maybe the withdrawer who's sitting there hearing all of this um, needs to be supported and know that you Ben are going to make the your office safe that this isn't going to be a place where anything goes and that the other person the angry pursuer can just dominate the whole session right yeah they they they're too used to that pattern and they've learned how to survive that um, and they'll survive it by shutting down sheltering turtling yeah. and then and then your your alliance with them right so you are in a great yeah and i agree that that's a big part of that is that's um, and, I, and I think we should actually role play this um, because, but then I even see, I also picked on something that you said about, you know, the other role that you feel like you need to, to, to be in it, which is reflecting and validating um, the pursuer, right? The angry person, the escalated person, and make sure that they feel like you're hearing them. And I don't know if you noticed it, but you kind of 
when you were saying that you were saying uh, something about, yeah, what I need to do with the pursuer, you kind of leaned in and you got a little bit more intense. You were like, yeah, yeah. This is really yeah. Cool. right. right. And, yeah. so, and that's something that, that we work on, right. Is, is sometimes it's trying to match the pace and the intensity with some, yeah. um, because that actually has been proven to help them feel heard. Yeah. Cause in a day to day, if we get escalated or angry, right. Every no one's comfortable with that emotion. So we, we want to put out that fire by telling them to pipe down or be right. quiet or that's not true. Yeah. If you could just be nicer. Right? Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. so can we do a role play here? Sure. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be, be both people. I'll be a, just, uh, I'll, I'll just make it up as we go. I'll be an angry, um, pursuing husband would we'll just say this is a uh, heterosexual couple um, and I'm going to be in my panic and my anger and my criticism and uh, you're going to be a much more passive or no, no, I'm, I'm going to also, I'm going to play both. I'll also be, then I'll be the more passive wife who's uh, more of a withdrawer and yeah. just sort of sitting there taking all this abuse Yeah, yeah. And, and let's see how you handle it yeah okay okay so i'll just start in as as if i'm the pursuer right so yeah. so yeah ben i mean this this week's been terrible because um sally oh, over there she's barely even trying i don't even know if she wants to be here yeah and i'm so yeah. sick and tired of this because it's like um i feel like i'm the only one who cares about this relationship and it's always been that way and she just goes off with her phone or goes off with her whatever she does and it feels like it doesn't even matter to her yeah so you're you've been it's been a hard week with this distant distant wife it sounds like sharon i don't know <laughs> has been distracted and you've been lonely and this has been hard for you this week right really hard and, right, and, right and, I'm, and i'm losing i'm losing hope because this yeah. is just um it's it's ridiculous that yeah. um you know that i can't get her mm. to to talk to me yeah. you know there's there's yeah. been no sex and yeah. it's just uh you know, I mean, it makes you really think that there's something wrong with her, like that she's, yeah. you know, yeah. or maybe, maybe she's yeah. just so repulsed by me that yeah. I'm, maybe I, I'm just so terrible. You wonder if you're so repulsive that she doesn't even want to have sex with you. It's been so frustrating. You're trying to get that to happen and it's not. It's not. And it's, this is killing you this week, it sounds like. So hard. I'm just, yeah. I'm just, I'm kind of yeah I'm at the end of my rope here right yeah uh, yeah so i can understand that that's scary that's a scary frustrating space to be in yeah yeah i, w I wonder i wonder sharon what it's like you as you i'm i'm listening to john over here talk talk about this frustrating frustrating week i don't know how how is this for you to hear him expressing this yeah, well, um, I'm kind of used to it, Ben, and mm -hmm. um, I just kind of sit here and I just, I don't say much because if I say anything, he just gets more angry. Oh, man. And um, yeah. so I just, I don't quite know what to do because it just seems like, and I do try. Mm -hmm. I've been trying, like with the with the sex stuff, I've been trying. Yeah. to talk more you've given us those exercises about mm. having you know intentional conversations with each other and i've been i've been but it just feels like it's just never never good enough um, oh wow i just don't I, don't I don't see how i don't see how i'm ever going to be um what he wants i i almost sense this uh this this i can't do it i i don't have it i don't have it in me i don't have it he, he wants more than I'm even able to provide. I'm, I'm trying yeah, to, and, and, and I close my eyes because I'm, I'm exhausted. Yeah. I'm exhausted. Exhausted. And, uh, yeah. So you're and, almost, I and, sense this like pa um, passiveness or almost like this, like 
white flag of surrender, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it's like, and I'm just exhausted. All right, so let's pause for a second. Yeah. Tell me what you are, as you're doing the work you did with the pursuer, first of all, mm -hmm. and then what you just did with me. Tell me about what you were thinking about, you know, what you were trying to do, and, and also talk about what it felt like to be doing it as the therapist. Yeah, yeah. I was I was anticipating you splitting into two people because um, the, uh, the 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 while the pursuer was uh, expressing their frustrating week, typically you would you would hear the withdrawn person the withdrawer going no I I've tried I did the things I did I I we had sex what more do you want right kind of like right. um, kind of like trying to deflect those yeah. bullets those accusations yeah so in my brain i was i was wanting to i was wanting to kind of reach out and like touch your knee or be be i wanted to connect with the part of you that wasn't acting at the moment right, right. yeah no, yeah and i was and, and that actually was was working because i i was feeling with the way you were reflecting because i think you mostly were reflecting and validating is it um it did make me feel more. I felt like I was able to calm down. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's a reason, right? That that withdrawn partner feels so distant. There's a reason why you're um, you're coming in with these complaints, right? These and these complaints. You're you're longing for that person, and that need is is uh, so strong. And that by the end of this 50 minutes together my goal is to move you from the accusations get you down into what you're afraid of what what it is that you're feeling not your primary emotion of anger or, or secondary emotion of anger but your primary emotion of um unsure uh insecure um uh, you know disconnected and to where this withdrawal can hear that can hear it in a it delivered in a more uh in a deeper tender way yeah it invites the withdrawer to be empathetic to you rather than um trying to shield or block or um, yeah i mean that that makes me think of a, a client that i was working with about a month or two ago and i won't i'll change the name that change this the story so it doesn't give anything away but it was just and I've seen this so many times where the um, it just feels like the, the the pursuer just wants to be heard. And just it's almost like because you're there, Ben, you're the therapist and you're able to just, you know, you're you're are being em empathetic. You are listening. That it's like they just want to make sure that you understand mm -hmm. that, that they you know, that it's the other person's fault and that. And that it doesn't make sense and all this stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a there's if I can if I can share an analogy that um, I think illustrates this well. Yeah, is and I'll often share this, uh, but it, it, pic, picture you're in a crowded room and and somebody uh, accidentally bumps you with their elbow, and uh, in response to that bump. You could respond two ways. You you could go you you could pipe up and go, dude, you freaking hit me! Like, watch out, clumsy! Like, man, that hurt. You you you're so unaware. And I could I could come out and attack the person who was an idiot. Or another method, if I get bumped in the elbow, I could go, oh oh no, how that hurts. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Yeah. Oh, uh, I, 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 are that, is there, are we okay here? I'm, I'm hurting. Um, yeah. Right? Yeah. And as, as I respond in this way, oh no, my head, what do you want to do? I want to, I want to make sure you're okay. You, you know, want to take, yeah. take care of you a little bit. Right. You want to take care of me. I'm expressing my pain. When I express my pain and my need to feel better, Oh man, oh my head, give me just a minute. 
you're going to come in with empathy. You want you want to provide something for me. Right. And even if you're the person that bumped me in the head, you might turn and offer that empathy. Well, and, and especially it's easier to get the empathy if I'm not being blamed. Exactly. If I'm being blamed and yelled at, it just turned. I was actually talking to. Well, no, I was listening to um, a little plug for um, Four Play Radio, the George Fowler and Lori Watson podcast, which is one of the best things I've ever seen for couples. Uh, www.fourplayradio.com. Um, go to Four Play Radio on Spotify or Apple Apple Podcasts. Um, but they were talking, Ben, about this this stuff from the standpoint of working with a a, a, a woman, a withdrawer, mm -hmm. uh, talking about sexual cycles, right? And that this woman, in this role play that they did, George played this, this woman. And what was so fascinating was the woman could barely even you know, she didn't really want to talk about sex because what she said, this is what George said in the, in the, in the role play. She said, you know, I, I, I don't even feel safe talking about it because one, it always leads to a fight. And two, all that I'm going to get out out of any conversation about sex is my husband is going to tell me all the ways that I'm failing him. And so, yeah, we avoid the conversation. Absolutely. And we don't have sex and, you know, to be honest, I don't, even want, I don't even really want to talk about it. And, uh, you know, and, and then, you know, and then they, and then George and Lori were, were, were talking about how in that moment, the yeah. biggest temptation for us as therapists is to jump in and start trying to get her to talk, like saying, oh, no, it's okay. And let's do it. And, you know, it's not going to get better. If you talk. Instead of what George said is, is that you've got to validate reflect and validate and stay with the person who's withdrawing yeah. and stay with yeah. that with that block because you know the phrase you've heard me say a lot which i just stole from george is you know that the, he would say to that you know sexual withdrawal something like you know that makes perfect sense and it makes perfect sense to me ben that if uh you've had a history with this relationship of being told that you were wrong and you weren't enough and you weren't making your partner happy sexually. And, and if most of these conversations turned out to just end in, in up in a fight and you feeling worse about yourself, then of course, like, why would you want to talk about it? Like that yeah. makes, per that makes perfect sense. Because what he's doing is he's, he's reflecting and validating that pursuing tendency, right? Yeah. I got to make sure I think my son's yeah. cartoon is on the other other but it's this you know but it's 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 validating this pursuing or excuse me validating this withdrawing energy which then what it can do is it can shift because then the withdrawer starts to feel heard and starts to to, to hear somebody especially yeah. about someone in in a, a role of authority Right, like the therapist who's taking the time to understand why why she doesn't want to talk about it. And, yeah. why, and why it's not safe, right? Yeah. And uh and that's something that I've been trying to do is trying to because it's hard. It's because I in my most of my life, most of my relationships, I'm a pursuer. Mm -hmm. And so I usually come at things like if there's a problem, I want to talk about it. I want to bring it up. I want to blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's easy for me as a therapist to fall into a situation where I can actually in a subtle or not so subtle way, start pursuing, pursuing. <laughs> the, and making the withdrawers feel e even worse because yeah. the message that I'm giving them is, well, why won't you talk about this? If you would just talk about this here with us, then we could make this better. But clearly, yeah. it's almost like clearly there's something wrong with you if you don't want to talk about this really <laughs> hard thing. Yeah. I love that phrase you said that you learned. Just stay with the block. Don't try and don't try and tell them why they have to get over the block, but capture the block, understand the block, validate it. Right? That's right. That it's that it, so they, 
Right. So like, 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 here's an example of that would be, you know, if you, um, yeah. like, um, let's say in, in, in that example, I was just looking away because I was thinking in that example, if, um, you know, if you, if, when I was the withdrawer, if I had said something like, um, yeah, I'm just kind of losing hope on this whole thing. And I just, uh, I just, yeah, I just don't even really think that we're very well matched and I'm just not going to ever make him happy. Right. And then if you had said something like, ask me to do something like, like, like do that, like ask me a question, I'll try to dig a little deeper with me on that or, or ask about my body or do something and then I'm going to block it. And then let's see how you handle that. Okay. And then I need to jump off in about five minutes, but, okay. um, okay. So, yeah. So, so I, I just, it was just talking about feeling hopeless. Mm -hmm. I got distracted. That's tell, okay. me what, tell me what. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm just feeling hopeless and I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm the withdrawer, and I I don't don't really want to talk about this stuff, and mm -hmm. because I don't think it it helps, doesn't make make things better, and so mm -hmm. I don't even really know why we're in therapy. And yeah, so do something where you're kind of trying to probe that, try and get me to 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 tell you more about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. This this makes you even right now as it comes up, you worry that it, this isn't something you even want to to burn up time with in session right. it's it, because it's been so difficult in the past yeah yeah i mean it's just like yeah i guess i don't see any i don't see any point you know mm -hmm. I don't see, see any point in, in it doesn't it. it doesn't it doesn't seem like it would help get things better to well it's because we always just ig, ig, it always ignites a fight mm-hmm Mm -hmm. yeah yeah you, you don't want to ignite a fight but so you're just gonna s steer clear of that yeah hey see that see but that that's great i mean i know you didn't do a whole lot right there but you were just you just reflected beautifully what i said and you're with me and and you didn't push you you, you know you, you didn't you didn't really push me you just stayed with me which maybe I'm, I I maybe wasn't what you asked me to do. Maybe you asked me to push you, like like in an ineffective way. Did you want yeah. me to block? You wanted me yeah. to. But maybe just in your brilliance as a therapist, it's really hard <laughs> for you to do, do something that would not be effective. <laughs> I don't know. All right. All right. Well, listen, Ben, we better quit for today. But I think this is great, I, and um, thank you for. Um, being with me today and i think we should do this again and talk more about you know what it's like the different skills right as a therapist that we use to work with pursuers and withdrawers yeah yeah it's i'd be happy to do it it's a good thing helps okay, sharpen us ben. this is ben ben croft fantastic therapist at the eft clinic which is www the eftclinic.com salt lake city utah you can find him probably by googling him also ben mm -hmm. croft and you're an lmft right ben lmft yeah i'm on psychology today and stuff like that okay. i'm i'm there as well great. well ben thank you my friend yeah. and uh, hey you have hey. have a great rest of your day thanks for spending some time man okay bye okay take care